Take your Bibles and turn over to the book of Acts with me, Acts chapter 1. The work on our school desk is progressing pretty good. We're just about on the final leg of them. Praise the Lord for that. Brother Ronnie and I spent all afternoon cutting 104 circles out 22 inches in diameter of carpet. And I can't hardly straighten up now. <laughs> You get in a position like that, and uh, finally I, I told Ronnie, I says, you know, I'm giving up. I'm going to let you do it. So he took it over. So, of course, I had the hard part done, but anyhow. <laughs> anyhow, we had good time, fellowship. Good time. Acts chapter 1, I want to read, uh, begin. Uh, Let's look at verse 3 of chapter 1. It says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken unto you, or taken up from you unto heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank and praise you tonight for your precious Holy Spirit and for the Word of God. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, as the Word has been read, and Lord, I pray that, God, you might start illuminating our hearts and our minds with it. I'm praying now, God, as the preaching of the Word of God is about to take place, that the anointing power from on high might fall down upon this message, upon your messenger. And Lord, just meet with us here for just a little while tonight. Stir the hearts of your people there's somebody here that needs salvation, I pray that you'd save their soul. But Lord, most of all, I pray that you might get honor and glory from everything that's said and done. And we ask this now in Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach a message. I've never really done something like this. I mean, I've done a bunch of different things. But I want to preach, if you don't put a title to it, on what will happen when Christ returns. What will happen when Christ returns? And I just thought of something. I've got to turn my telephone off. I usually leave it on my desk, and I forgot to do it, and I don't want it ringing while I'm preaching. That would be bad. The, the verse 11 of chapter 1 of the book of Exodus says, Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Now, Jesus is coming. That's a fact that the Word of God declares real strong. 
And what the problem I see with Christians today is I don't believe the average Christian either knows or believes that Jesus Christ is actually literally coming back. Right. You say, well, how can you say that, preacher? Look at the lives. Right. I'll tell you what, if I, if, I, if I didn't think Jesus was coming back, I mean, I, there's really not a whole lot to this Christian life if you don't have a hope right. set before you. Yeah. And see, Jesus Christ is our hope. And he said, if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So see, Jesus said, and these two men in white peril said, look, he said, this same Jesus, which is taken up unto heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. In other words, he is coming back. They saw him go out. They are going to see him come back. But there's going to be some things that are going to happen when he does come back. What will happen to the saved? Well, the dead saved are going to be resurrected according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. It says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. See, we got a hope. Man, I tell you what, I got a hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The dead that are saved, Jesus is bringing them with him. There's going to be a resurrection, honey. We're going to have a reunion in the sky. Amen. What about the living saved? Well, it's going to be a rapture for us, honey, a catching away. Amen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 15, it says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, we're not going to go before them. They're going up first. The Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, and forevermore we're going to be with the Lord. What about what will happen to the sinner? Well, the dead sinner is going to remain in hell to await trial. And that trial is going to be the great white throne judgment. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 13. It says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. That's at the great white throne judgment. That's what happens to the dead sinner. What about the living sinner? Well, the living sinner is going to face the tribulation and the mark of the beast. Over in Revelation chapter 20, verses 5 and 6, the Bible says, But the rest of the dead shall uh, not, uh, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Well, I'll tell you what, you're going to die if you're a sinner and you get killed during the tribulation. You're going to be resurrected again if you're lost and you're going to go up there and be judged and you're going to die again, man. That's the second death. Glory, hallelujah. That blessed is he that has part of the first resurrection. That second death hath no power over us. Praise the Lord. What will happen? What's going to happen to during the seven years of tribulation and suffering? Well... There's a lot going on down here. It's, have have you all been reading the paper and all this stuff about these RDIF chips are going to be inserting them in, in factory workers there in Wisconsin? I heard that 15 years ago or more. But it, it, they were doing it then. But they really got it perfected now. All you got to do is go in there and you swipe that. It's, they put it right in here. They said that's where we're going to put it. Just swipe that and it'll hold up just it's the size of a grain of uncooked rice. It'll hold up to 1,500 typewritten pages of information on you. It'll count you present if you're there at work. It'll check you in and it'll check you out when you scan that. Uh, what, there's all kind of stuff going on. 
But I tell you what, the Antichrist has got to have all of this stuff in order. It's got to take place for him to take control of the commerce. See, without that mark, the Bible says, and that's, I believe, the mark of the beast. And just because you get it down here now don't mean you've got the mark of the beast. You've got to literally bow down and accept him as your Lord and Savior, so to speak. That's what happens to somebody that's lost, and they'll wind up in the lake of fire when they do it. And guess what? If you don't do it, you'll get your head cut off. That's a pretty good incentive, you know. But you start thinking about what will happen during the seven years tribulation and that time of suffering. Well, the Jews. There's going to be 144,000 that Jews that are going to be preaching the gospel. That's the ones basically that are saved to begin in the tribulation. The land is going to be restored to Israel. The temple is going to be rebuilt. And they're going to preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Not the kingdom of God, but the kingdom of heaven. Now, there's two kingdoms mentioned in the Word of God. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, and you're born into that. Jesus told Nicodemus there in John chapter 3, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is what Jesus was preaching. That's what the Jews were looking for. They were looking for Jesus Christ to come down here and literally set up his kingdom down here that had been prophesied for years and years and years. But guess what? The Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 11 that he came unto his own and his own received him not. But then in verse 12 it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The glory, hallelujah, when you receive Jesus Christ, you become a child of God, and you get born into the kingdom of God, into the family of God, and glory, hallelujah, man, we're ready to go. We're ready for the rapture of the church, man. If you ain't ready here tonight, you ought to get ready, because I want to let you know he's coming. Revelation chapter 7 verses 4 through 8 Turn over there, I'll read that to you Revelation chapter 7 I don't want to misquote it Revelation chapter 7 And look at verse 4 This is talking about the 144,000. It says, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now these are Jews. They're not Gentiles. They're Jews. And these JWs have got it all crosswise. It ain't talking nothing about a Gentile. These are male Jewish virgins that are going to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. And I'll tell you what, when it starts happening, and it's got so explicit here, it tells you in verse 5, of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nebulum were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. And the, of the tribe of Ishkar was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Jude, uh, Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. That's 12 times 12. That's 144,000 according to the Word of God. And I'll let you know there ain't no Gentile involved in it. It's all of the tribes of Israel that are sealed 12,000 that are sealed to preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, turn it back over to Luke now with me. Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. We'll do a little bit of Bible study here tonight too while we're doing this. I just kind of like got looking at this, and I said, well, you know, I like that. I'm going to do this. Lord just said, okay. He don't usually let me do what I want to do, but praise the Lord, he's doing it tonight. Hallelujah. Look at verse 24. I'm just going to read that one verse there. Luke 21, 24. 
It says, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, according to Daniel chapter 2 and verse 21, it's talking about the times of the Gentiles. And I want to let you know the times of the Gentiles is almost done. When that period of time prophesied in the Word of God is over, guess what's going to happen? The Lord Jesus Christ is going to step out on the portal of glory. He's going to call His church out. And then there's going to be a great tribulation happen. And then he's coming back to set up a millennial reign of Jesus Christ. He's going to rule in Jerusalem sitting on his father David's throne. And he's going to rule with a rod of iron. So glory, hallelujah, man. It's about ready to take place. Bible tells us over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. This is happening during the tribulation period. That's when the son of perdition is going to step up and he's going to say, I am the Christ. I'm the one you're looking for. And that's when the veil that's over the Jew's heart and eyes are going to be taken away and they're going to see him for who and what he is. And that's when they're going to flee to the hills. And it says in verse 4, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See, that's pertaining to the Jews, church. They're the ones that have the temple worship. They're the ones that re- temples rebuilt. They're going, to have, they're going to have the sacrifice reinstated and all that. And the Antichrist is going to stop going there and stop the oblation, the sacrifice to cease, and that's when he's going to declare himself God. There's going to be multitudes of millions of people are going to accept what he said. But those Jews, when that veil is removed, and particularly that 144,000 that has the seal of God on, They're going to go about and start preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. That's the only hope for mankind. What about the Gentiles? That was the Jews. Well, the Gentiles, you either accept Christ or Antichrist. You either receive the mark of the beast or you die. We got it so easy today, church. All we got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe in what he's done for you. Man, there ain't no works involved. It said, the Bible tells us not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, I wonder some people... That's, I have a hard time with these people that are like a yo-yo. They're in church and they're out of church. They're in church and they're out of church. Honey, if you get a dose of the Holy Ghost of God, if you've been renewed by the Holy Ghost of God, there's something inside of you that wants you to come worship God, that wants you to be faithful with God, and wants you to get around God's people. Man, I tell you what, I, I love coming to church. I love fellowshipping with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I, don't, I can't imagine sitting home. Glory, hallelujah. If you are saved, the devil's got you right where you want you, where he wants you. But if I was you and I'm like, I was like that, and I'm preaching to the choir tonight, or this is Wednesday night, everybody's here. Amen. But you ought to start checking up. Come on. That's right. Amen. There's internet. Oh, yeah, they're watching on the internet. Hey, everybody. Now, you out there that's sick, I ain't preaching towards you. 
Them ones that got a car and they got the money and put gas in the car and they're able to come, they ought to be here. That's right. Amen. It ain't even raining tonight. Amen. We ain't even got a lake out there tonight. We got a new pump out there, though. Brother Ronnie and Brother Phil put it in the other day. I got my finger sunburned because I was pointing, telling what to do. I think they felt sorry for me. But if you've got the Lord, I wonder, some some of y'all might not have got what I got. If you're saved, you got what I got. And there's something inside of me that constrains me. There's something inside me that keeps prodding me along. I want more of it. Matter of fact, I'm addicted to it, man. I got to have another fix, man. Glory, hallelujah, and I'm going to go to the place where I can get it, and that's in the house of God. You ain't going to get it sitting home, honey. If you want God to give you a touch, you ought to be right here at the top of the spout where the glory runs out, man. I want to get splashed all over, man. Glory. I was sore and tired when I started this thing. I'm feeling better already. What will happen during the sovereign reign of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, there's going to be peace on earth. Now think about that. You ain't got some demon-possessed little punk kid over there in North Korea threatening to kill us. And you trust me, that dude is demon-possessed. The Bible tells us, And I forgot to write where the scripture was. I'm sorry. But it says, And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy unto their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I think it's in the book of Isaiah. I don't know why I forgot to do that, but I did. Anyhow, there's going to be prosperity for everyone. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 4, verse uh, 35, verse 4 through 7, says, Say unto them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come and with vengeance, even God, with recompense, He will come and save you. Verse 5, it says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. See, that's the sign that Jesus Christ did in his ministry. And they still didn't believe him. Remember whenever John the Baptist was in jail and he, his, he sent his, his disciples to go talk to Jesus and said, Are you the one that we're looking for or is there going to be another? Remember what he said there in John chapter 1 and he saw Jesus coming? And he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. You know what Jesus told his disciples to go back and tell him? He said, The blind have received their sight. The dead are raised again. You go tell John that. That is a sign that was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. And it says, And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirst a thirsty land, springs of water, in the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. What will happen to Satan? This is my favorite part. Amen. That <laughs> his cruel reign, and he's the God of this world right now, that cruel reign is going to be finished forever. In Revelation chapter 20. Turn over there. I want you to see that. You ought to mark this in your Bible, man. Highlight it. Do something. Memorize it. Quote it every day to the devil. He don't like that. Revelation chapter 20. Look at verse 7. It says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his reign. This is where they grab a hold of him and they throw him into a bottomless pit. They chain him up. And it says, Shall be loosed for out of his prison... 
and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. That's a bunch of them, right? And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. There wasn't a shot fired. There was fire from come down from heaven and devoured all of them. And it says, and the devil, I like this, Amen. that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Amen. Glory, hallelujah, praise His holy name. We're done with it. He's going to be, look at verse, that verse 10 there. I like that. He's cast into the lake of fire. And he's going to be tormented day and night. And I want to let you know, there are different degrees of punishment in the lake of fire. He's going to have the greater. And we're, we're out standing right there at the great white throne judgment, and we will be there. Yes. We're going to see that rascal. Yes, sir. They're going to grab him by the nap of the neck, and God's yes. going to hold him out over that thing, and he says, bye-bye. And he's going to be there forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What will happen at the judgment of the sinners? Well... Look, in, look back in verse, over in verse 11. And it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place found, or, or, and there was found no, found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, Stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. Yes. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according, see here you go, according to their works. Right. Now, if you're planning on going to the lake of fire, you need to be the very best person you can be. <laughs> it won't be quite as hot for you. Like I said, there's different degrees of punishment. It says in verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Death and hell delivered the ones that were in them, and they were judged according to their works. Look at verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Yes. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to die if you're lost and go to hell? Well. And then God's going to resurrect you, bring you back to life. Mm -hmm. And you're going to stand before God at the great white throne judgment. And He's going to put punishment on you. He's going to declare what you deserve and who, what you've done and everything according to your works, and he's going to cast you into a lake of fire, and that is the second death. You're going to die twice. See, lost person is born once, and they die twice. The saved person is, is born once. I mean, I die once and born twice. I knew I'd, I was just seeing if y'all was with me. I have, I've been working around Ronnie, and I, I'm getting these elderly pauses for some reason. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's good to have somebody blame this stuff on, but Susie's in agreement with me, right? Yeah, see there? <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyhow, what will happen to the Savior and the saints during this time? Well... According to Revelation chapter 22, turn on over to verse, chapter 22, look at verse 5. 
or verse 4, it says, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Honey, that's us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We're going to rule over the house and the family of God forever. Look at verse 6. And he said unto me, These things, sayings, are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angels to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Now, if the things were shortly must be done back in the days of John, how shortly do you think they are right now, man? You're talking, you're talking 2,000 years shortly. It's close, honey. It is close. Look at verse 17. And I'll close. It says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is athirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in his book. And if any man take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. You start thinking about the things. These people that are so educated, they're, they're, they're educated beyond their intelligence. I have a hard time with these Bible translators. When you add to and take away from the Word of God, you're standing on a very, very dangerous ground. Very dangerous. I can't imagine what it would be taken, have my part taken out of the book of life. Wow. There's no room for you to even fit in there anymore. That's serious, church. We need to be real careful. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm, I, I'm glad that God did a work in me, and He's still working in me. I don't know about you. He's still working on me. I don't know about if he's... Is God still working in y'all? Praise the Lord, man. Every day, man, we ought to be getting a little bit closer to him. You know why? Because we're closer to our departure. We ought to... How many of y'all have taken... How many of y'all ever take a vacation? Y'all ever take a vacation? How many of y'all ever pack when you get get ready? You know, all the things you need and all that. How many of y'all packed up and ready to go for the shout? We need to start setting and laying our stores up in heaven, honey. We need to start putting about we because guess what? You ain't gonna need to take nothing with you. You ain't taking nothing with you. But anyhow, your works since you've been saved, not to be saved, but since you've been saved, that's what you're putting up there. Your life, your testimony, your witness for him, that's what you're putting up there. The more you can do for the cause of Christ, the better off you're going to be when you get there. We need to be prepared because the time of our departure is at hand. What will happen when Christ returns? Let's all stand to our feet, every eye closed, every head bowed. Our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you tonight for Jesus. And Lord, as we open this invitation, Father, I just pray that God, you might work in people's hearts. Lord, if there's somebody here that's not saved, God, I pray, Lord God, that you'd show them the need for salvation. Lord, your children, God, if they're not walking the way they ought to be walking with you, God, I pray that, Lord, you might help them, Lord, to draw closer to you. Lord, to follow your leadership. And, Lord, we just be careful now to give you the praise and the honor and the glory for everything you've done, everything you're going to do. And we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen.